So I thought I'd go ahead and talk a little bit more about all the various uh, Model 1 ROM images out there, the few I've found, uh, and the checksums, etc. for them. So first off is a shout out to Ira at trs-80.com. He's got a great resource here. I found a lot of information here. And on one of his pages, the ROM analysis page, he actually talks about uh, the various ROMs and the checksums for them. So let's talk a little bit first about these checksums. Uh, these are a really simple checksum. They are generated by taking each byte and adding the values of all the bytes together into a 16-bit field. When that addition overflows, you just ignore the overflow and just keep adding it up. And what you end up with is a 16-bit value that is essentially, well, it is. It's a checksum for the ROM. There's a lot of ways to calculate checksums. MD5, there's a bunch of them. But this is just a very simple uh, algorithm. Uh, they've gone to the... Uh, work here of actually identifying checksums for various ROM sets. So the Model 1 version 1.0 has three ROMs and those three checksums, as I described, should equal these values. And, and he goes through a, you know, an exhaustive list here of various ROMs and the checksums. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and work through the various ROM images I've downloaded and calculate the checksum for them and see if I can identify truly what set they're out of. So I want to go ahead and calculate checksums for all of these ROM images I have. I've found a few sets out on the web. I want to calculate the checksum for each one of these ROM images. And a way I can do this is using my Wellon programmer software. It happens to calculate this style of checksum for us. It takes each byte in the image. It adds it together. It creates, in this case, uh, this checksum, but we can ignore the upper four positions here. That's just where it overflows. We're concerned with the bottom four characters here. Uh, that is the checksum of the device. Uh, so for my device, I've uh, just picked a 27C32. That's a 4K by 8 EEPROM. Uh, which will work. These ROM images are 4K in size, uh, so it matches, and that's kind of important for it to match. If I was to pick a larger device here, this 4K would get loaded into the first 4K of that device, and there would be all those extra bytes above that would get it added into the checksum, and could potentially, well, it, it would mess the checksum up. Uh, so anyhow, let's go ahead and load one of these. So I'm in the ROM set 1 folder, as I have here, and we have the ROM for Z33. We're going to load it starting at address 0 with a buffer here. We're going to load the, a, a full 4K. It's a binary file. Load it as binary. And what we can see here is we get a checksum of AD8C. And if I look at the ROM checksum A on Iris site, I don't actually see that as a legitimate checksum. I have something close here but it doesn't jump out uh, as a legitimate checksum. So, again, I don't know, you know whether this is valid or not, but what I'm going to do is see if I can rename this file while it's open in the uh, editor here. So it's AD8C, the idea. Score 8. D or AD AD eight C So we've calculated the checksum for this Z thirty three image and we've added the checksum uh, to the ROM file name. I'll go ahead then and load the second ROM, which is Z thirty four, load it the same way, and it's got a checksum of DA four five. And if we look at the uh, ROM B checksum here, we actually see a lot of DA45s. So that ROM would most likely match any one of these images. So I'm going to take that file. I'm going to rename it to underscore DA45. And then I'm going to go ahead and load the third ROM image. This would be the last 12K. And it's got a checksum of 40BA. 
and do I see there I do a 40 BA 40 BA so go ahead and rename the file 40 BA so in this case we know that two of the three ROM images here match the checksums that I see up on IRA's uh, website which is nice uh, a quick comment on the extension somebody used for these. This is the ROM Z33 that goes in the Z33 ROM socket. Z34 is the first 4K of an 8K ROM that would go in the Z34 socket. And this is the second 4K that would you know, fill that entire 8K space. So as you can see here, we've worked through this first set of ROMs. I'm going to go ahead and go through the couple other sets I have here. And... Uh, We'll see what we find. So as I've continued to uh, look at the checksums for these, we've got into this my ROM set two, which has got this TRS80 Alt uh, was originally the file names in these, and I've calculated the checksum. And in this case, if we look at the Z33 checksum, we have a B0C8. It matches the first half of the Z34 checksum DA45, and the second half uh, 4000. Six. I think the odds are pretty good. This is uh, a Model 1 version 1.3-1 uh, set of ROMs. So that's encouraging. So I've moved on to looking at another set of ROMs I downloaded from the web that I believe are version 1.2 ROMs. And I've calculated the checksum for all three ROMs. And notice that we match the AE60 the DA45 and the 40BA. The interesting thing up on Iris site is there are four variants or actually five variants of the version 1.2 ROM set and if you watch the checksums here you'll notice the checksums are all the same. So this even though the internal bytes may be different the final checksum is the same. This was not uncommon in the day and that you a system might wake up and actually calculate the checksum for a ROM set to validate the ROM was correct or maybe an external diagnostic program would calculate the ROM uh, checksum and then compare it to what it believed it to be and when you made changes sometimes you would go in and add pad bytes in there to make the checksum actually match what you expected to even though the contents were different inside and if we look at the CRC32 and the MD5, these are much more accurate ways of calculating checksums. You can see that they differ across these. So what I know at this point is that this set of ROMs look like they are a, uh, a, a you know a version 1.2 set of ROMs, but I don't know which one of these variants it is, this dash 1, dash 2, dash 3A, dash 3B, dash 4. So I'm probably going to have to go in and calculate a CRC32 or an MDA checksum on these. So as I discussed a, a minute ago, uh, these checksums for these ROMs match multiple entries on IRIS site. So I wanted to go ahead and calculate an MD5 or a CRC32 checksum for them. Uh, earlier I was calling it an MDA checksum. It's actually an MD5. So what I have here are the three ROM files that we've identified with checksums. And to create a single file that has all three ROM images, you can actually use the copy command. So we're going to copy the Z33 image. It's a binary file. We're going to add the Z34 image. Again, it's a binary file. And we're going to add that ZL2 image, the last 4K image. Again, it's a binary file to full.rom. And if we look at this, we'll find the full.rom file is now 12K in size. It contains the contents of all these files. I'm on a uh, website, diffuse.ca, that has a, an online program to calculate various checksums. So we can choose a file. In this case, we'll choose the full.rom file we just created, and we'll calculate the checksums. And there they are. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in a bit here to make this a little easier for you to see. So there's the MD5 checksum. Starts CA74 and ends 9539. And if we look at 
this image here, the Model 1 version 1 1.2, the 3A ROM set, it starts with the CA74 and ends with the 9539, so it matches the MD5 checksum. And then if we scroll down to the CR, CRC32B algorithm, you'll notice that it matches as well, 0D8A, 132E. So we've identified that the four ROMs that have these checksums and that folder I was just working in match uh, what Ira is calling the Model 1 V12.3A checksum. So I'm going to go through and do the same thing uh, for the other ROM images I have and see if I can match them up to what he has uh, listed on his website here. So I've gone ahead and worked through the spreadsheet you may have seen earlier. Uh, that had the various ROM images and where I loaded them and I've updated this to have the ROM images I'm going to use uh, in working through the information on Ira's website and the ROMs I had I've identified two ROM sets that were quote good up on Ira's site so I'm going to load those I'm going to go ahead and load the level one basic image I have I don't have any checksum information I don't know that it's good and then I will load my slightly customized ROM image as well so I thought I'd walk you through on the EEPROM programmer how I'm going to do this. I'm using my well on programmer. I have selected a uh, 29F010 device. I have gone in and I'll show you what I did. Edit the internal buffer, the entire thing, and I filled the entire buffer with ones. And now I want to start loading these individual ROM images. And so we're going to load we'll go to the folder where I have the ROM images and there's the version 1.2 and we'll grab the first ROM which is the Z33 ROM and we're going to do a couple things we're going to disable clear buffer options what that'll keep it from doing is filling the rest of the ROM space with ones uh, by default this would load this image fill the rest of the ROM space with ones when I loaded the next image that first image would get overwritten so we disable uh, Clear buffer options. It is a binary file. We can see that we want to start loading at address 08000. So we're going to start loading at address 08000. And we're going to load 4K of space. These are working in hexadecimal. So I can go ahead and click OK. And we've loaded that piece in. Now we want to load the Z34 ROM. Uh, open that up. And we're going to start loading that at 09,000. And again, it is 4K worth of bytes to load. We'll load the third piece, which is the ZL2 file. It loads at address 0A000. And again, we're going to load 1,000 decimal bytes. Oops, that's a typo. Uh, 1,000 or 4,000 hex decimal bytes, or what you know, uh, 1,000 hex bytes. Uh, that that is 4,096 uh, in hexadecimal. So we've loaded these first three images in. Let's just go ahead and take a peek at them and see what they look like. So this should start at address 8,000. So we should find all. F's until we get up to that address space and we're getting closer to it as you can see the background is all FF's getting close and there is the beginning of the ROM at 8000 hex we can see the uh, level 2 basic banner here which we expected to see and we could, could should continue to see data through address AFFF so if we keep scrolling down we're seeing data, we're getting close to the end and all the way through AFFF we see data and then the rest of the uh, buffer is ones again. So let's go ahead and load the version 1.3 ROM and the first file is the Z33 file and in this case that will load at address 0C000 hex and again it's 4096 bytes load the Z34 file and it loads at D000 and again 
the length and then we'll load the ZL2 file that's the final 4k and that goes at 0e000 and again it is 4k long so we should have now loaded the version 1.3 files let's go back and peek at the editor again and if we get down to the 8000 space we see the data we had before we should find a block of FFs and when we get to address C000 we should see the version 1.3 ROM start and we do there's the mem size uh, banner and this should continue through address EFFF and there it is through EFFF now I want to load the level 1 basic image so we're going to load we're going to go to the level 1 folder and the level 1 ROM I have and there's again a binary file it's going to load at 10000 and it's again a 4K image uh, still disabled, still binary and then I want to load this level 2 image uh, my modified one this has just got my uh, Shadowtron blog banner in it so we find that image it's going to load at address 1400 and it is 12k or 3000 hex in size again disabled uh, binary let's go back and look at the editor and save these next two blocks or look at these next two blocks so I want to get down to and there's the version 1.3 and here is the uh, level 1 image and you can see oh, sorry the text is about how ready what sorry break out the level 1 image here and when I get to address 1400 or 14,000 the scrolling in this is bizarre in this little editor I've commented on that before Uh, we can see it starting right here and we can see where it says the Shadowtown blog and that should continue through address uh, 16FFF and through address 16FFF so I want to go ahead and save the buffer And I'm going to just name this for now master. If I could type. Just so I've got it saved. We're going to save the full buffer. Uh, it's the full size of the 29F010 uh, flash memory. Save it in binary as well. And we've now created an image that has these various ROM files. At the correct address spaces here I think you can see now why I went to the detail of creating this chart to make it easier to load I have a 29f010 in the socket and hopefully it will erase and program here it says it's erased successfully it should fail to verify because we haven't programmed it yet it should pass a blank test and let's go ahead and program it and it's programming you may have noticed it did its own erase up front the LED on the programmer is doing its thing and we have programmed it it says it programmed OK and we should now have a ROM we can use in the little daughter card uh, we can go back and verify it again if we want to and see that it's fine so uh, there we are uh, kind of an example of walking through loading the various files off the disk system into their designated address spaces in the ROM image 
at some point in the future, if I acquire ROM images for these other versions, I'll be able to open up that master.rom, load these into their appropriate address spaces, save it out, and reprogram the flash memory. Hope you found this useful, and we'll talk soon.